All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we are going to be doing division with ratio tables. Now, normally when we do ratio tables, we're multiplying. For instance, the number on the top multiplied by, in this case, four, uh, and we will keep going up uh, the ratio table using multiples. So we are gonna be multiplying today, but we're gonna use it for the purpose of division. So the problem that they have for us, we're gonna be working on number three on our area and perimeter checkpoint. Problem they have for us is fill in the ratio table to find 260 divided by four. You'll notice at the uh, end they have 260. And if we're going from here to here, we're multiplying by four, which means if we're going from here to here, we're dividing by four. So really what we're trying to figure out is 260 divided by four equals what? So at the end of our ratio table, we should, hopefully, uh, we, we should have this all filled out and we'll have a nice pretty number down there. Um, so it says fill in the ratio table to find 260 divided by four. Now, <clears throat> I like to have meaning to my numbers. I don't just like them to be numbers. When we use math in real life, we have meaning behind them. So of course, we're gonna go 260 means 260 students at Hogwarts. And we're gonna divide all our students at Hogwarts into four houses. So what would this mean down here on our ratio table? It means one uh, if we have four students total, total students, this would be, mean we have one student per house. So we'll say students per house. And I know I'm squeezing this in here, but just keep that in mind, all right? In fact, I'm gonna zoom in just so we can make this a little bit easier here. Hopefully that helps. <clears throat> so if we have four total students, we have one student per house. I'm going to erase this just so I'm not covering it up so it's not super messy. <clears throat> but here we're using our ratio table. We've used ratio tables before. You guys know what we're doing here. So let's start off we'll quickly. We'll double this number. Double one is two. What do we do if we double up here? We do the same thing down here. We double it. Eight. All right, well, let's go to our next one. And instead of doubling, we'll just add one. So we'll go three. One plus two equals three. Oh. So if we did that down there, up there, then what do we do down here? Well, there we go. We do four plus eight equals 12. Okay, let's start cooking here. We'll go, instead of going to four, let's go to five. We know five is half of 10, so that's a nice number to work with a lot of the times. Um, <clears throat> how can we find five? Well, we know five is two plus three. So if we add these two numbers together, that means we gotta add these two numbers together down here. Eight plus 12 is what? Eight plus 12 is 20. All right, let's keep moving, we'll go. Nice, even, friendly number we know of is 10. Now we can find this out really simply two ways. We can either say, okay, one times 10 is 10, meaning four times 10 is 40, or we could also say, we know five is half of 10, so times two and times two. 20 times two is also 40, makes sense. Cool, let's keep going. Let's go to 20. Uh, so if we have 20 students per house, how many students is that gonna be total? 20, let's see, we know two times 10 is 20. So then we go down here and multiply that by 10. Eight times 10 is 80. Okay, we're still a far ways away from 260. So let's keep, uh, let, let's skip a little bit higher. Let's go now that we know 10, we know 20. If there's 50 students per house, we're doing the same thing. Five times 10 means down here it'd be 20 times 10. What's 20 times 10? 200. 
now we're a lot closer. So if there's 200 students total, we would have 50 students per house. All right. Here's where it gets fun because we're all, all done with doubling. If we double these numbers, we'll get 100 and 400. That's way too much. So let's get ourselves a little bit closer. Instead of doubling this, we'll just add 10 and we'll make 60. Okay, so we added 10 to 50, which means down here we add 40 to 200. Well, 200 plus 40 is 240. We are getting so close. All right, last one, 60. Well, actually, let's figure it out. What's the difference between 240 and 260? You'll notice that it's 20. So we need to add 20 down here to get 260. So we go over here and we say if we add 20 down there, what do we add here? We added 20 on the bottom, so we gotta add five on the top. Plus five. 60 plus five is gonna be 65. So if we have 260 students at Hogwarts, we separate them into four houses. We would have 65 students in each house. So we go down to our numbers here and they're saying 260 divided by four and we know that that would be 65. All right, so why is this important? Why is it easy? Um, you may say, okay, that just took a whole lot of time. That didn't seem easy to me. Well, it really did make it easy because we were using our clues from previous numbers. For instance, two plus three equals five. So eight plus 12 equals 20. Uh, we're using clues from different numbers to build on them and get closer and closer to our answer. So, um, the best part is once you practice that in this enough, you will start to get it down in your head and you'll do it a lot quicker. For instance, you'll know, okay, if we're multiplying by four, um, I know one times four is four, uh, five times four is 20. I just know that off the top of my head. I know uh, 10 times four is 40. So then I just double that and get to 80. Oh, double that and get to 80. Um, I know if five times four is 10, 20, then 50 times four is 200, getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. So you just start to naturally begin to do these bigger numbers in your head more and more. Um, and it makes it easier eventually to divide, uh, big numbers in your head. So keep practicing and that's all we got for today.